Yes. But I would preface those comments by saying right now, at this moment, what I mean by that is a San Antonio Spurs team fresh off of being incapable of hitting shots and with what we just lamented about Tim Duncan and how you have some question marks about, you know, the, you know their personnel in terms of what they're going to be able to do. I say that about Oklahoma City because I would always favor a LeBron James team over a Kevin Durant team until Kevin Durant shows me that he's willing to grab the moment whenever he's going up against LeBron James. In the case of the Golden State Warriors, I'm, no, I'm not certain about Steph Curry. I'm not certain about the health of Steph Curry. Um, I certainly wouldn't give anybody the edge over a healthy, a fully loaded, healthy Golden State Warriors squad because I think Kevin, uh, you know, Steph Curry and news reports coming out, Mark Stein uh, to revealed that Steph Curry is about to be named a you know, two-time league MVP. Um, so this guy is just sensational. And without him, they're still a good team. But they're good yet, ordi yet ordinary. They wouldn't beat the Cavs without Steph Curry. That would not happen. That's not going to happen. And so when I look at Cleveland and I look at the amount of threes that they're hitting, I'm looking at a guy in Tyron Lue who deserves so much credit because of what he has implemented in terms of quickening, upping the pace, the distribution and the movement of the basketball, how it's been a godsend for a Kevin Love and a Kyrie Irving because they're able to get more shots, how a J.R. Smith is able to get off as well. LeBron's going to be LeBron. But to me... Ironically, and let's give respect where respect is due, Kevin Love has taken some hits, not just on this show, but nationwide in the basketball world because he looked like at times disinterested, at times absent, at times just incapable of being the Kevin Love that we all anticipated he was going to be coming from Minnesota. That has gone out the window. Kevin Love is down there banging. At the same time, he'll grab his rebounds, but he is a marksman from outside. He can hit that three-point shot. And if Kevin Love hits three-point shots, they are a completely different animal. And they are somebody to be reckoned with. So it has me looking forward to, A, Steph Curry getting healthy so I can expect to see the anticipated rematch that we've all been anticipating, which is Golden State versus Cleveland. Kevin Love brings a new dimension to the Cleveland Cavaliers combined with Chan and Fry, those two on the floor together with LeBron does not give up size, but they add additional marksmen on the perimeter, which facilitates spreading the floor, which makes them incredibly dangerous. I would say right now they deserve to be the favorite, but only because Steph Curry is not healthy. We'll see what happens when he gets back. But at this moment, it would have to be Cleveland. I'm with you about the Steph factor, and I don't know what to make of it because now Steve Kerr is saying he's doubtful for tonight's game four at Portland. So yeah. I'm starting I to wonder. What's that? I wouldn't play him. I don't care if he is healthy. I wouldn't play him tonight. Not well, at all. Because Steph well, Curry would not see the floor two tonight. Two after tonight, and then we'd see That's what right. would happen. So when he does come back, the question we can't answer at this moment is, will he be 100% healthy? Will he stay 100% healthy on his sprained knee? I don't know, but if he can't, if it's ill-fated for Steph, it's going to be ill-fated for the Warriors. So we're back to what happened last year. As you well know, there was no Kevin Love in the finals. Kyrie was lost at the end of game one, overtime. And yet, LeBron's team, mostly because of LeBron, was in commanding position up two games to one with game four in LeBron's house. I thought they should have won the series, and obviously they lost that game. They lost two out of three at home. They ended up getting closed out in six games. So you, you have to hang on to that and couple it with the fact that, as you point out, Kevin Love's playing as well as he's ever played for anybody, including all those l sort of lonely T-Wolves years, those six years in Minnesota. You're right. At six foot, 10 inches tall, he is a sniper now. He's got the hottest hand from three, and with Kyrie as one of the better two guards, if not the best two guard in the game, and with LeBron running the show, they have found their flow. And I'm going to say this again. This is the amazing thing to me, Stephen A. LeBron James is a poor three-point shooter. He is also the greatest in the game at setting up three-point shots. Nobody does it better. I'm going to say it again. LeBron James is still the best passer in basketball. 
He's one of the greatest ever, and right now there's nobody who does it better than LeBron at whatever we call him, 6'8", 6'9". The vision this man has, coupled with the freight train ability to drive it into the lane whenever he so desires. He leads the Cavs in points in the paint by far. He's got 106 points in the paint to Kyrie's 44. So what's happening is whenever LeBron chooses, he drives the ball in the paint, and nobody has better swivel-headed sort of vision than LeBron at finding the open sniper and hitting the open sniper with the perfect right-in-the-pocket pass to set feet and launch three. He has so much to do. It's not because he's making threes, he's setting up threes. Nobody does it better, and this team is rolling and feeding off LeBron's quarterbacking of the three-point shot. And as I said Friday, well, if, you, if you can't beat them, join them. And they have joined Golden State. In fact, I think they've surpassed Golden State as the best three-point shooting team in basketball. Uh, I, I'm going to start calling them Threveland because they are the right. Threveland Cavaliers now. Th these are, I, 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 I've never seen anything like this before. They're, they're shattering gonna, records. I'm not going to go that far. I mean, they did play Detroit and then Atlanta well, in the, the postseason. I know the ball went in, but I'm not going to call them a better three-point shooting team than the Golden State Warriors. I'm not going that far. I'm not going to lose my mind now. But let me let me also say this. While you give credit to LeBron, and he definitely deserves the credit because he's the one on the floor, I got to give it to Tyron Lue and his coaching staff. I Let's agree. look at this. Let's look at this, Skip. And this is a, you know, this a, I'm, I'm not breaking anything here. This is our, our, our you know, our crack research expert, Mr. David Sabino. Mm -hmm. He gave these stats. I'm going to read them out to you. You got Cleveland last year in the finals. They shot 29.3% from three-point range in the finals last year. Yep. This year, under Blatt, they were shooting 30, 35.9% from three-point range. Under Lou, now it's up at 38.4%. That's a 3% hike. Yep. That's big. That, that's, that, that's significant. Yeah. Kevin Love has gone from 36 to 37%. J.R. Smith has gone from 39% to 42.6%. The big one who's benefited the most from shooting three point from three point range in the Tyron Lue era is Kyrie Irving, who was at 29.2%, although he only played a few games under Black because, you know, he, you know, he came back. But, yeah. but you look at that, he's gone from 29.2% to 37.3%. And with the addition of Chan and Fry, now they're shooting 40.7%, including the playoffs, since Chan and Fry has arrived. And so when I look at it from that perspective, I think Chan and Fry's presence has helped them, enables you to spread the floor. Moskov has been releva relegated to the bench. Tristan Thompson is out there just to rebound. But literally, you can actually sit Moskov and Tristan Thompson down because when Love is on the floor with Chan and Fry, with LeBron and Kyrie and Jr. It's also a different piece there as well. So it, it's about the lineup, but it's also about Kevin Love because Kevin Love really, really knows how to play the game of basketball. We just wondered how he fit in in Cleveland. It just didn't seem to be an ideal fit. But when you look at the way that he is playing right now, combined with Channing Fry, you can interchange Channing Fry if you need three-point. If you need defense and rebounding, you can put Tristan Thompson up in there. Okay? But you still, as long as you got LeBron on the floor with Kevin Love, Kyrie and J.R. Smith, if J.R. and Kevin Love are hitting threes, this is an entirely different team altogether, and they are a force to be reckoned with, no doubt about it. It's got me looking very much forward to Steph Curry coming back healthy because I want to see what this matchup would be. Remember, we walked into the season with Golden State having a huge attitude and a chip on yep. their shoulder because there were people out there that questioned whether the title was fraudulent because Kyrie went down, and then after that, Kevin Love, obviously before that, Kevin Love was down. I don't call him fraudulent, but these were questions that folks had. So now they wanted not just the title, they want Cleveland fully loaded. If Cleveland is fully loaded with Tyron Lue as your coach, with that coaching staff, look out. It could get very very interesting. Yep. I just hope we don't have to wonder if somebody else's title is fraudulent because Steph couldn't play this year. That, you know, like, what, what if he can't come back? Then we're going to have That's an true. asterisk beside That's whoever true. wins it. Well, we, we, no question. No yeah. question about it. And you know what? It would be absolutely right because if you consider the season Golden State was having with him on the floor, combined with the fact that he was the league, he's the league MVP again, yeah. plus arguably the most improved, then they, if, right. if there was an asterisk because Kevin Love was down and Kyrie Irving was yeah. out, how can there not be an asterisk with uh, Steph Curry being you out? got it.
But first, Cleveland has to get past the winner of Miami, Toronto, and two big injuries there as well with both their centers out for tonight. I, I, don't, I don't anticipate that will be a problem, but okay. All right. But the, it's, it's the next step in the process, Stephen, yes. right? Yes. All yes. part of the deal. Coming up next, Canelo Alvarez with a monster knockout over the weekend. So who should he fight next? We'll discuss.